All right, today we're gonna to be stringing a scar. Now this one's already strung, but I gotta unstring it so then you can learn how to string it. So the small holes take the 440 screw. It's pretty simple. There's all three screws clamped down in the barrel. So you'll have these screws that then clamp onto the barrel. There's three of them. Um, if you have a nice barrel, you don't wanna scratch it up. You can put some tape around your barrel and then attach it with these screws because these screws will bite into your barrel a little bit. Most barrels are aluminum, so not a big deal, but if you have a brass barrel or an anodized barrel, you may want to protect it from getting scratched by these three screws. Then your scar will also come with hex nuts and short 10 through two screws. The hex nuts go into the slots. There's three of them, and then the, the screws go into them. I would tighten them just enough to bite onto the hex nut. You don't have to tighten it all the way. Now, when you're stringing it, the fishing string is very, you know, light and soft and stuff, so it's easy to get lost. And it, the easiest way to string it in and out is I tie a hex nut onto one end of the string. That'll be the end that I thread through the barrel. Now, I'm just going to unstring this one real quick. There you go. So, we have our fishing string, which is not tangled in a giant knot. We'll take a knot and we'll tie it onto the end of one end. Like that, we don't need a lot of slack, so just do two, uh, two tight knots. You don't want that to fall off halfway through or you will probably have to restart. So there's one. Now, a lot of these principles apply to many different scar designs. However, some scar designs require you to do three separate uh, lengths of fishing line and connect them, tie them onto the 3D print. This one, the line is contained entirely outside of the 3D print, which makes it easier to install because you can do it in one go. But take note that if your scar requires you to do it in multiple sections, you will have to cut your fishing string into multiple sections and repeat the process multiple times. So the scar is a little bit easier, not necessarily better, but you'll take the free end of your fishing line and we're just going to loop it around. I guess you could tie a knot as well. One of the short 1032 screws that we put in through one of the hex nuts. Like so. And that will hold the string on as we string it back and forth. Just like that. Now make sure that screw stays in that hex nut or you're gonna have a bad time later. Now we will string it through. Now if you notice you've got sets of two slots around each hex nut and that is because it's a six string scar. If you start stringing on this side you have to go to the right so you end on the same screw, but if you start on the left of the screw, you have to go around this way to end on the same screw. So as long as you start and end on the same screw, you're fine, but you can't go across to, to the end on a different screw than you started with because then you're, you'll have a five string and not a six string. So we will go down the middle with the hex nut and it'll look like this. Now we want to go uh, line it up. So you've got lines on the inside, so you're going to Go in one side. Now we're gonna go to the other side. So we're not gonna go to the two slots that are next to each other, we're gonna go across. So we'll end on the one we started on. So we'll do one, then two, two, and then back to the one. So we're gonna go to, this is to your right, to my left. So we'll go to my left, to your right. We're gonna loop it onto these hooks. Now these have ridges in them, so we can just loop it around. Then we can hold it there, put the nut back down through, tighten it down, and then you can see the string is around there, back down, and then we want to go over to the next one. So we got to your right, to my left, and then we'll just loop it around one more screw. Now because it's looped around, I'm just going to tighten that screw down, because I don't need to hopefully adjust that screw again. And then go back down, and again to your right, to my left. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go through the slot, over, back through the groove again, put the hex nut down the tube, pull it tight, and you'll see the string is now inside of that crack. Then I'm gonna flip it over, and again, to your right, to my left, and I'm gonna go into that groove, wrap it around the head of that screw, while holding it, tighten that screw down to hold the string in place, and then put the hex nut back down through, again, to your right, my left, go down, 
the second to last groove. Same thing here, find out where I left off, and then go over. No, nope, that stuck on my finger. Yep. So then go here. So to your right, my left, go back down the middle. And there you go. Then you come back out through here, wrap it around the last screw and tie it down. And there you go. This one did not line up because I had already cut the string too short. And then I tied it again on the nut. So I didn't quite have enough string. Um, although fishing string is a little bit stretchy. So maybe we could like pull it really hard, but because I had unstrung and restrung this, I no longer have enough line. Maybe I do. Let's see. Look at that. Just nice and tight. Uh, normally you wouldn't restring a scar with the same string because the string will wear out over time. This is probably a year old. So you'd want to replace, if you're restringing, you'd want to replace it with new string that's not worn out. Oh, and I just snapped that. So there you go. It's a five, six strong scar. Protective cover. And then to adjust the, the stringing, the, the turn, if you look inside, you can see the strings are pretty straight because you just strung it. But now we can turn it an eighth an inch and we can see that the, the rifling or the fishing string on the inside will change its spin. Most people use about an eighth an inch spin, depends on your dart and your barrel length and all the other factors. So when you first install it, you'll have to adjust that. Now, if you have a barrel, because it is a three point attachment scar, a lot of scars can sit crooked if there's no play. Now, this doesn't make much difference if you're shooting medium distances. However, the longer out you fire, you'll notice that the barrel, if it's tilted to one side, will affect your accuracy. I usually just worry about the left and right, not the up and down, because you can always just adjust your elevation when you're firing, but adjusting left and right can be annoying. So if you find your sharp shots are going off to one side, you can then adjust one of these screws and then get it centered in the middle. Um, and if you notice that it's being very consistent and you don't want to adjust this, you can just turn your whole barrel and that'll make it so the scar, even though it's not straight, you can then align it so that your your skew is up and down instead of left and right. So your shots will be dead center, but just higher or low, then you can adjust your elevation. Because getting it dead on straight, um, concentric with the barrel can be very difficult. But that is how you would string the scar and how you would adjust it. Um, and you would just take a couple shots, figure out where they're landing, maybe adjust your scar, adjust your turn, maybe adjust the left or right and see where it's going. You should be able to hit pretty accurately with new darts with a scar of this type. There's also different kinds of scars. Uh, this one, I'm pretty sure requires you to, um, you can thread this one in the same way, going through one side through the middle, over or down, same thing, except to adjust this one, you have to take off the cap, then you have to lift up, turn, and push back down, which means your your string tension is gonna be, be changing a lot more or to, to turn it. You can't just turn it, you have to like lift up and turn it. So that's different scars. There are a lot of other scars which just have the strings running on the outside and in. There are some scars that have holes all along the side, so you have to tie it down, go inside, through the hole and tie it again and cut it and then do that for all of your strings. Most of those scars are only three strung because the more strings you have to individually tie, it gets very obnoxious to have to tie all those. So I prefer a single string, multiple passes set up. Seems to work just fine for me. There are score scars that are just one solid piece that have rifling built in that you cannot adjust, which is fine as long as you can adjust your barrel length. Um, because then you can find the barrel that matches that twist ratio and you should be good to go. However, like I said, you cannot adjust it, um, which may or not be to your advantage depending on how much adjusting you want to have to do. Um, this one's also not ported, meaning the excess gas cannot be vented out through the barrel. So that may affect your performance. However, those rifling ridges are pretty steep. So you do have some excess gas to go around the sides of the dart. Then you have some other barrels, scar barrels, which are 3D printed that have internal rifling and porting as well. So there are so many different kinds of scars. You really have to choose one that fits with your dart and your blaster and your barrel. For a spring powered blaster like a Calibur or Talonclaw, U Bullpup, Chimera even, I'd recommend a scar you can adjust because those blasters, you can change your barrel length and size, which means your scar, you may want to adapt your scar to that. 
Um, but if you don't like a big chunky scar, you can go with a smaller chunky scar or a solid solid piece scar, a 3D printed, not adjustable scar. The only downside is then you won't be able to adjust it, but as long as you get your blaster tuned into how you like and don't change it, it should be fine. And they're easy to install when uninstall. Plus, strung scars kind of stink because you have to string them, which if you know you can break a string. Um, for plyo blasters, never use a scar. You're fine. Your accuracy, co your accuracy comes through your real alignment, not necessarily your spinning of the dart because there's not air volume playing a role. Uh, for HPA, I personally have found that a a, a tighter scar with maybe a little bit of venting is helps because the dart has so much air behind it. If your scar has a lot of room on the inside, the dart can actually tip inside the scar, throwing off the accuracy. So then I switch from a scar with a tighter bore, it dramatically increased accuracy. Um, and a vented tighter scar would probably help even more. But the real ringer I found with accurate HPA is gonna be the hybrid brass barrel that a Spectre makes. Because for some reason, the guy makes a really awesome barrel that shoots very straight, probably not even with HPA, but also any platform, but then you're using brass, which kind of is an iffy zone. Um, that's about it, though. I feel like the end-all, be-all of scars is whatever fits on your blaster, because some modified blasters, the barrel doesn't stick up far enough to put on a scar. When you can put on a scar, at that point, it doesn't really matter as long as you have some basic principles of some sort of rifling, maybe some sort of air porting on the barrel, and then size and shape kind of comes out of personal preference. And mounting style, if you have a threaded barrel, you have to use a threaded scar, or you can use a normal scar, but you have to be able to adjust the screws. You can't use a threaded scar on a non-threaded barrel. That's the difference. Because a lot of these solid single pieces are for threads. However, if you get a 3D printed one, you can just friction fit it on but I feel like there's a lot more play in that. It can get, it can get shifted easier, but your options are basically a friction fit, or a screw mounted, or a threaded fit. And it comes out of what barrel you have and your own personal preference. Because a threaded barrel is not always available for every model or every blaster, so. Yeah. Plus threaded scars are also hard to find. They're less common. I feel like you can use a slip on scar over a threaded barrel anyway. You want to tinker with it? So, moral of the story is you can pretty much use whatever you want as long as it works for you. That's basically it for scars. They do help with accuracy tremendously, especially at longer ranges. And if you have not used a scar before, I'd recommend that you, you use trial and error. Honestly, um, for like the Nexus Pro, again, something like size might be important to think about. So your best scar would have to be uh, mounted on your barrel. So your barrel has to be sticking out of the blaster. If your barrel does not stick out, you're not going to have room to put on a scar. So if you'll first want to get a longer barrel and then your scar that goes on to it, there's different diameters of barrels. So also pay attention to that or just go read some good, well-written document that tells you kind of the different options. So we can reference it later.